All right, welcome back to TV3 New Day. And of course, we are live. And so now we're talking about something that I posted on social media. And I realized a lot of people were passionate about it, especially because it has to do with the legal system in our country and the judicial system as well. And so what I posted actually was the fact that there are certain people who commit some very petty offenses and minor crimes, and they get jailed for about 15 to 20 years. Whereas someone causes financial loss to the state, and that person is only asked to pay back the money doesn't go to jail and sometimes they're even able to pay their way out of um, you know some of these issues as well and so that's what we're discussing today and I'll introduce you to my guest very shortly but in 2019 uh, the head of legal uh, public law actually at GIMPA mentioned that uh, okay let me let me just correct this okay let me increase this whilst I, I tell you what I wanted to say earlier. So the head of public law at Gimpa had mentioned or added his voice to the campaign for the decriminalization of um, you know, minor offenses in the country. Shiraj as well in April 2019 this year also added that they needed uh, to be decriminalized and they needed a declassification of um, such offenses in the country as well. Back in 2017, there was a report that was put out, and I'll tell you more about that. But these are what people think as to whether we should go ahead and decriminalize petty offenses in the country. So I'll start with Joseph Afari Kwanza, who says, hmm, this thing is really a case. People arrested for stealing some petty items are in prison for lack of accurate defense, whereas our so-called big men steal huge sums of money from us and an accurate defense is given to them. As Semo, to our lawyers, when are they going to be fair to the poor? All because of nook of fuel. Hmm. God is watching them from afar, always using their big law terms to save thieves under our sheets. And Ebenezer Krenzel uh, says that we should rather advocate for expediency and passing the non-custodial sentence bill. Achu has done so much already. We need to do something to... ATSU, okay. Uh, <laughs> Mami Ya Adepaswa said, yes, we are always making the rich have their way and the poor man suffers. And then, um, okay, I think I've confused myself on this one, but let's go on Twitter and find out what people are saying. So Kobe Empire says, very true. It's about time we consider certain offenses, even though I'm not encouraging anyone to commit uh, such offenses. Come to think of it, those with minor cases get more years in prison than those with major cases, and this only happens in Ghana. And Kelvin Maunya says, it, we should. The main thieves are in our public offices, stealing huge sums of monies with their signatures. This is how the system works. The rich goes free whilst the poor suffers. It's about time justice. Well, it's not about justice anymore. It's about money and power. And David Owusu answers, says someone, uh, let's move away from that and move to another uh, message. So Mr. Mike says there are various ways of letting people know what they did was wrong and they had to change from it. Let's take community service, for instance. We can let these offenders go out to do community service for days or months, depending on the severity of the offense. And so now let me um, introduce you to my guest in the studio. Mina Mensa is the head of Africa office uh, at the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Bella. How are and you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're well as well. So Dr. Isaac Annan is also the director of Human Rights Shraj. Good morning, Good morning to you and welcome to this conversation. I believe you've gauged the opinions of people and it's very obvious that majority are in favor of decriminalizing um, these offenses. In 2017, like I mentioned, the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative put out a report on why they thought it was necessary to decriminalize some of these petty offenses. But someone may ask, when you say petty offenses, what do they mean? Because clearly there's no right definition for it. So what constitutes petty offenses? And once again, thank you very much, Bella, and thank good morning you, to your viewers and listeners. Um, when we talk about petty offenses, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights yeah. has defined what petty offenses are. Okay. And they did this because... Um, as far back as 2002, because of congestion in our various prisons in Africa, and yeah. for certain African countries, when you go there, even it was happening in Ghana, but I think yeah. that things have eased up a bit. When you go there, a lot of the offenses for which people are incarcerated can be considered as petty okay. offenses. Mind you, in Ghana, we don't have petty offenses in our laws. Mm -mm. We have misdemeanors. Yeah. But some of the misdemeanors are very minor, minor offenses. Okay. So the, um, after a couple of years, the African Commission realized that even though they had um, at the, in Ouagadougou, yeah. they decided that some of these offenses should be decriminalized and declassified. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, the classification normally refers to francophone countries. Okay. They have classified most of their laws. Okay. But um, in most of the Anglophone, Anglophone countries, you don't we really don't, find okay. Yes, so they were saying that such some of these offenses should be declassified and decriminalized so that a lot more people are put in jail for those offenses. After okay. 10, 15 years, they realized that nothing much was happening. Yeah. So they decided to do a, a law, a soft law, okay. to guide states because they realized that probably the states don't know how to how go about to. it. Exactly. So in 2017, they um, approved the law, and I'm, I'm just going to read the, what they, right, how they have, um, they have um, 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 ex uh, explained, explained what, it. Okay. what they mean by petty offenses. And All it right. says that petty offenses are minor offenses for which the punishment is prescribed by law to mm. carry a warning, community service, a low-value fine, or short-term imprisonment, often for failure to pay a fine. Mm -hmm. Examples include, but not, are not limited to um, offenses such as being a rogue, a vagabond, being idle or disorderly, loitering, begging, okay. you know, th those, those morality laws and vagrancy laws. Okay. Laws like, um, in Ghana, we have a law that says that insulting the national flag, mm -hmm. and it's in our criminal code. And you can be jailed for that? Yes, it's in the law. So if somebody so decides... It's criminal. Yes, it's a criminal offense. So if somebody <laughs> decides to apply it, you will go to jail. Insulting the national flag? Yes, whatever that means. I yeah, I was understand. going to ask you, exactly. <laughs> what, what does it mean to insult exactly. the national flag? But it's in our law, our law book. <laughs> so based on that, and because the AU has approved this petty offenses um, uh, um, uh, guidelines, yeah. African countries are supposed to be a part of that advocacy. In fact, there's a, a global campaign mm -hmm. going on, and CHRI, as part of that campaign, we did that document. So okay. petty offenses are, they are very minor offenses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the definition is so broad, you don't even know how to categorize it. Yeah. And the police and law enforcement agencies are using that. And those petty offenses are normally targeted at the poor. Because they can't pay. Exactly. Not necessarily because they can't okay, pay. So what's but because the somebody is poor, the person finds himself doing that engaging. act. Okay. Engaging that act. For example, okay. petty trading. Yeah. If you, you trade, you are um, in, into petty trading, mm -hmm. and you, like the, the people street who, the street workers and stuff yeah. like Abaye. Is that. Abaye. Is that Abaye. criminal? Yeah, if you're street walking. Yes, mm. at unauthorized places, mm. is, a, is an offense. Mm. You look at um, municipal. Uh, laws. Yeah. The bylaws. The bylaws. Yeah. You find them in it. It's okay. an offense to do that. And sometimes they get harassed, arrested. In certain countries, they are jailed mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that you are just criminalizing poverty. poverty. That's the basis for that. Okay. For yeah, the basis for decriminalizing petty offenses is not necessarily because we think it is right, mm. but we are saying that there are certain offenses. It is only the poor who would engage in something like this mm -hmm. for them to be arrested or for them to come in conflict with the law and they get punished for being poor. Okay. So that's the reason why we are saying that decriminalize some of these very, very minor offenses that unfairly target poor people. I see. And I think it's important. Let me come to Dr. Isaac Annan because I believe that this criminal act was gotten from the UK from the British, British the Common Ship. Law. And even them, they have made some no. steps to decriminalize some of these offenses. And we're still struggling with it. Um, is there a reason why we are still struggling with this? Because I believe this is straightforward. It should be easy to implement, no? Uh, it's not easy because, no? okay. I mean, legal reforms go through a process. Okay. And what criminal law is based on what normally we call the community morality. Mm -hmm. So at a point in time, our morality was based on what the British Didn't saw mean. as immoral. Yeah. And also what our customs and traditions saw as immoral. Mm -hmm. So that is the basis of criminal jurisprudence. And okay. Okay, the community sees that, for instance, walking a certain way, doing certain things at a point in time is, is immoral. And for that matter, we should criminalize it. Just like so, that? No, that is the basis of criminal okay. law. Okay. So, okay. but society is dynamic. Yeah. And as we are moving on, this is an inheritance from the British legal system, mm. a common law tradition. Okay. Since 1960 to today, do these things really, I mean, uh, stand the test of time? Yeah. Especially the offenses that uh, Mina has uh, spoken, spoken about. Spoken about. And how do people go 
into into this kind of uh, arrangement mm. because of their circumstances. Yeah. If you are poor, you are likely to engage it. Me and you do not engage in petty trading. Yeah. We won't be standing we around Mokola and all that view. Mm -hmm. And we will not be gay, engaging in what they call prostitution. Yeah. I mean, in, in decency, all those things that they talk about mm. are basically, I mean, things that people within a certain economic bracket or social status engage Engaging. in. All but right. getting law reforms is not as easy it's as you say. You need to give, give uh, build a groundswell of, I mean, people who come to appreciate that society has moved on. And like she's saying, insulting the national flag. Yeah. or certain offenses which I teach criminal law mm -hmm. but I can bet you that most criminal law lecturers will not teach this part of the law. Why? Um, because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Something like dancing, <laughs> dancing, dancing, dancing to of, offend, offend, offend or to insult. Thought. Is it the criminal law? <laughs> so if, if I should read Sessions uh, chapter Please 7. Please go ahead and do that. <laughs> chapter 7 of the, the say what for instance a person commits a misdemeanor, a demeanor, for yes. instance uh, if uh, the person knowingly live, lives wholly or in part of uh, any of a prostitution, yeah, or is put to uh, for the purpose of again exercise control, direction, or influence of a movement of a prostitute in a manner to as to aid, to aid, uh, to aid. So, for instance, persons engage in prostitution mm -hmm. or keeping the brother. Yeah. So keeping a brother, me and you, if you are sitting somewhere, and I always ask the police, how do you even come to the Conclusion that me sitting in I front of her, you go to maybe Agbogbloshi, mm -hmm. you know those deprived communities, yeah. and they always fall prey. Like she's saying, these are poor people. Yeah. You go to Agbogbloshi, somebody is sitting there, and just, I mean, and engage, there's a raid, you know, and you know, pick, pick everybody, everybody up. and say yeah. that, okay, these people are doing things which are immoral. Just because you know, I'm sitting in front from, of yeah. So they can be charged for keeping their brother. And oh. these are some of the things that affect certain group of people, women, children what's well, prostitution mm -hmm. and how do you even prove that it's very difficult in okay. law but it's based on reasonable suspicion i always ask for a criminal liability to lie that you must see the people in the act mm. so, so so in your case <laughs> are you saying prostitution is a petty offense it's, it's part of what we are saying it's quite okay. it's offenses i mean affecting okay. morality based on morality okay so okay. we see go a uh, prostitution as immoral Okay. And I think most societies, by some, are mm. regulated. Yeah. 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 So you can imagine, you can't call yourself, even having a boyfriend, one or more than one boyfriend, you are seen as a prostitute. Yeah. But what happens in our reality is that, like Mina said, the target. Yeah. And these are vulnerable people just trying to act out a living. Mm -hmm. And based on that, they might be targeted, labeled, and said that they are engaged in certain offenses for which it's not morally exactly. decent. Definitely. Obscenity. What is yeah. obscenity? Yeah. Unruly behavior. Okay. Drumming. Mm -hmm. All those things. <laughs> yeah. They will, are all... Will you be drumming here yeah, court or whatever? Exactly. exactly. Uh, this I, I get what you mean. Clearly trampling upon their human, human right. rights. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that some of these, uh, the reasons why we are pushing to decriminalize some of these petty offenses is the fact that, you know, there are some treaties, international treaties that are pushing um, for that. I, let's talk about the Africa chat on human rights and people. And yeah. clearly this does not, it's not even in, in uh, consistence with that law as well. And that's why they're asking that we decriminalize it. Can you tell me more about some of these uh, no, international... The, um, uh, maybe because yeah. of my... Okay, let I'll, let you, yeah. I'll let you speak. You no, know, uh, Ghana, like most countries, but I single out Ghana. If you look at the, the literature, Ghana has ratified all the nine mm. core human rights treaties mm. in the world. Okay. Without reservations. And if you ratify treaties, you are bound. Okay. We are a party to the African Charter. We are a party to the protocols within the sub region, mm -hmm. which all is about human rights. We subscribe to what we call the International Bill of Rights, which is made up of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Okay. We, in our constitution, Article 40, we did indicate that we respect international law. Mm. What is human rights all about? Human rights is about trying to protect the vulnerable yeah. and the marginalized. And this, if, I mean, this whole thing about decriminalization yeah. is targeted at people who ordinarily are disempowered. Yeah. And they need to be power, uh, uh, empowered. empowered. They are the people rather. For, you know, like I keep saying, your right to even make, act out a living 
is affected if you are arrested. Look at the people who sell on the streets. Exactly. Do you think ordinarily they will be on the streets? Mm. But because of the dislocation in the economy, they find themselves there. Okay. Sometimes they are arbitrarily arrested. Mm -hmm. No due process. No due process, yes. Yes, and these are some of the violations. But, and they are tortured. Torture is what we call is non-derogable right. Mm. You cannot, a state cannot negotiate that. Okay. But look at Abahi mm. and all the trappings. So at the end of the day, these people, me and you cannot be ordinarily arrested by the police yeah. because yeah. we can challenge. Yeah. But these are people who don't have the wherewithal to even to challenge. challenge. So at the end of the ones. day, their liberty, freedom of movement, mm -hmm. dignity mm -hmm. are all trampled upon. Yeah. And they may not even sometimes have knowledge about how to assess this. Yeah. justice system okay yeah. mina are there some countries that have been able to go ahead with decriminalizing some of these petty offenses yes quite a number of them it's a process okay but going back to the international um, standards that ghana has that signed ghana, onto, yeah you see you can't just ghana is very good at appending their signatures to all kinds of documents and not really letting their laws reflect mm. what they have signed on because when you you sign um onto um, conventions with no reservations. Yeah. What we are saying is that you are domesticating those things. Okay. So we've signed onto those things, but our laws have not moved, moved in that direction. To, yes, in that direction. That is how come we say one thing and we are doing something else because mm. internationally we'll be held accountable to what we ourselves have said have that said we are going to do. do. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the countries that have decriminalized? Mm. Recently, um, if you follow the news, Rwanda, Mm -hmm. decriminalize a mm. number of laws. Yeah. Kenya is doing the same. Mm. Malawi is doing the same, especially rogue offenses, um, vagrancy offenses. Those yeah. there, yes, Malawi is doing the same. Okay. South Africa is doing the same. Mm. So from the top of my head, those are the... Those are yes. some of the but there are countries like Liberia, Sierra Leone, where they are also working... Nigeria working towards mm. doing the same. Okay. The, the processes are in place and um, they've made efforts. But there's a campaign that is going, like I said, it's a global campaign. Yeah. And in CHRI, um, the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA, mm -hmm. is the one that is supporting us to do advocacy around that, do um, conversations, create okay. awareness, engage the stakeholders. Okay. I must say that last year we engaged quite a number of the stakeholders. All right. We engaged the Attorney General's department. The Attorney General was very keen on it, but mm. the challenge she had was even, because as part of the uh, pe decriminalizing petty offenses, it means that we should have um, a non-custodial sentencing regime, regime okay. which we don't have. And one of the key challenges is the fact that our addressing system, if you are doing non-custodial, yeah. you know, so she raised all those issues that, mm -hmm. um, are we ready considering the system that we have? We went to see the Chief Justice. Okay. She was also very keen on, we saw the Parliamentary Select Committee on Defense and Interior. Um, obviously, strategies here. And we are doing this in collaboration with all of us globally. It's okay. being done in collaboration with the national human rights institutions mm. because they are the custodians of human rights in country. We are mm. CSOs. But the, they are, well, they are, uh, governments support it yeah. so and it's uh, it's their responsibility to do these things but they can't do it alone so it's a global thing being led by the national human rights institutions okay well, well there's some timelines that, yes yeah there were some timelines but you know this is advocacy and yeah. so in advocacy for example um by now we should have at least countrywide, nationwide, mm -hmm. a lot more should have been done to sensitize the people towards mm -hmm. that. But we've done just a little. Yes, exactly. we sensitized some um, media personnel, I think at the beginning of the year, okay. and TV3 were represented. The idea was to sensitize media personnel so that they out of their own volition, because they have platforms, mm -hmm. they could use their platforms to, to also sensitize people. So it's a good thing that TV3 is having us mm -hmm. here so that we can kickstart the conversation, and then it can be sustained. Because if you don't sustain it, there's 
no point. Exactly. And in certain places, when you talk about decriminalized petty offenses, people are saying that you should let crime, it will fester crime. I was it's going to true. say that because a lot of people are saying, okay, so if I'm going to steal a goat and I'll be asked to go and sweep Kaneshi for two weeks, then that's not really difficult. I might as well continue stealing because I won't go to jail. Or I won't be made to, you know, pay heavily for the crime that I've committed. You, if I may come here at this point, you know, like uh, she is saying, I started by saying that society is dynamic. Yeah. And what shapes our morality is based on what is in vogue. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Yeah. You know, this thing, you are colo, you are this, yeah, you are exactly. Hand. And I'm saying that if you look back, what was the situation then in mm -hmm. the 1960s? Mm -hmm. And what was, and sometimes our law is more or less based on our customs and tradition. Yeah. You know, all this debate about comprehensive sexuality education, education and death penalty and yeah. all those things. I mean, the emotions that are attached to it. Mm -hmm. So as we are moving, like she said, oh, these people are coming again. Look at these human rights people. They are saying that for now, even if you commit a crime, you should be left free. Yeah. You see the, mm -hmm. so that's why you need to sensitize people okay. and for people to know that at the end of the day, the law must serve society mm -hmm. rather than yes. making society to retrogress. All right. And given the people who you're talking about, the key people in society who are not affected, mm -hmm. they will not be engaging in these things. No. And so you, that even tells you that if I'm sitting in my office, like I'm saying, I will be sitting at Agbo mm -hmm. all or some of us, and look at the target. Yeah. It, it's based on the community that the people That's live in. Okay. And sometimes you are labeled based on where you live mm -hmm. and the trade that you are involved in. Okay. So, meaning the suit and tie and what have you, oh, this is a, an elite, yeah, yeah, you don't have a problem. Exactly. Yes, but, oh, these are people stay in a certain community, they are capable of doing these things. All right. So, at the end of the day, we need to now sensitize society and say that all this that we are talking about, at the end of the day, people who are more or less marginalized in society, in society. and who ordinarily will not be involved in crime, they are trying to yeah. rather make a, a living. living are rather right. becoming targets of this kind of... Uh, okay. Uh, Kwekunyama uh, quickly says that decriminalizing petty offenses isn't the way forward. This will cause lawlessness and will make society <laughs> unsafe. And we know what this might lead to. Rather, let's focus on strengthening our judiciary system. Amos says, in this Ghana these days, all these things are politicized. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, Godwin says that hmm, this is a very big problem in Ghana. The real thieves wear suits and tie and sit in office while the youth and the uneducated are being harassed on the street each day. We need jobs. This is all time will allow um, for us to discuss on, on this particular topic. But then I hope that with this, of course, we have sensitized to a certain extent and we will keep adding our voice to ensure that, you know, there's, there is a way forward for this as well. So Mina Mensa is the head of Africa Office Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative and Dr. Isaac Anand, Director Human Rights Shraj. Thank you so much for joining me on the show.